Hello, welcome to this video where I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Xcode user interface. And the Xcode right now that you see on the screen is Xcode 6.4. So if you're running Xcode 6, 6.1, you know, any of the Xcode 6 series, the interface will look like this. And from version to version, they don't change that drastically, especially with the panel walkthroughs that I'm going to do for you today. Uh, they have been pretty consistent between versions. Anyhow, let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is this top bar right across the top here. You can see with this button, that is the button that you will use to run your project. Uh, and what it does is it compiles your code and opens up the iOS simulator. And you can uh, then test out your app in the simulator. And here, next, you can choose the simulator that you want to run it on, whether you know, it's the actual device if you have one, uh, or one of these other simulated environments. Uh, and here in the middle is just the status. And on the right hand top corner, there are a couple of buttons to control how the panels slide in and out, uh, which panels you want visible or not visible. Uh, so for example, this one right here hides or shows the navigator. Right, so you see that left panel sliding in and out. And this navigator shows you, uh, it's got a couple of tabs, first of all, notice that across here, there are a couple of icons, but most commonly you'll be looking at this first one uh, and it shows you all the files in your project. On the center right here, this is where you're going to be editing your code and writing your code. On the right hand side, this panel is called the inspector and this button right here controls that. And this inspector is useful for when you're looking at a specific file, for example, uh, and you want to see some properties related to that file. Or for instance, if you're looking at the storyboard where you're going to customize the user interface of your app, this right hand side, this inspector, uh, if you're selecting an element on the storyboard, so for instance, if I select, you know, my scroll view here, uh, and then I go over to inspector on the right hand side, there are a couple of tabs as well, notice here. Uh, I can customize the properties for that element. Now notice that this inspector pane, this whole right hand side pane is kind of split into two sections. The bottom section actually has a couple more tabs. So don't get confused there. Most commonly you'll see me on this object library tab where you're going to see all of the different elements that you can add onto the storyboard. Okay, and finally, this uh, this section here in the below the code editor is called the debug area. And here's the icon to hide or show that. And these buttons are useful for working off of a laptop screen when you may not have as much screen real estate. Uh, you can hide all of the panels that you don't need and just work on your code. So the debug area is for when you're troubleshooting your code, uh, maybe your app crashes when it runs and you're going to see some text here. It's also split into two sides. In the debug area here, you'll see that there's these icons. And in future debugging videos, we're going to actually dive into using this debug area uh, to troubleshoot your code. So I won't get too much into that. For this video, I just wanted to walk through uh, kind of where all of the panels and controls are. So one more thing to note is in the storyboard here, uh, you've got this pane right here that lists all of your uh, elements and your view hierarchy. And this is called the document outline. Uh, and to slide it in or out, you click this icon here. So a lot of people don't notice that there's a little icon here in your storyboard that you can hide or show that. And this is very handy to have simply because sometimes when you have elements overlapping each other, uh, it's hard to select it with your mouse. So you can just click it off of this outline here. And also visually, you're able to see which elements are children elements of uh, other elements. In this storyboard here, it's hard to tell uh, sometimes if an element is inside of an el another element or if it's sitting on top of it. And by looking at this document outline simply because of how it's indented, you can see you know, what the hierarchy is. Uh, finally, there are a couple of more buttons beside these uh, icons which you use to hide and show the panes. 
and this is the single edit view or the standard editor, which uh, by default you're going to be looking at. And then secondly, there's something called the assistant editor. Now when you activate this in your storyboard, it's going to show you the, uh, the code file that is related to you know, this view controller that you're looking at in the storyboard. So if I don't have enough space, I can just hide the document outline for a second. Uh, and this is useful for when you're trying to connect your elements to your code file uh, as IB outlet properties. You can also, furthermore, this is this last one is the version editor, which I don't find myself using too often, uh, but unless you compare two versions of the file. So I'm just going to go back to the single edit view here. And I'm going to go back to a code file here. Another useful feature are these arrows right here. So if you're jumping from file to file, let's say I'm looking at this view controller.swift file, and I switch over to card.swift, and I want to go back, rather than clicking view controller.swift, I can just press this back arrow or, or forward arrow to go, you know, to, to traverse how I was navigating between files. Uh, and notice here that there's also this breadcrumb, which is very handy, uh, and it lets you jump from file to file, like that. Okay, I think that pretty much wraps it up for a walkthrough of the main pieces of the user interface for Xcode. Uh, stay tuned for more tips and tricks on how to use Xcode.